Okay, Julie, this video is for you. I don't want to be a hog when it comes to um, kind of showing you how to to look for the morels. Okay. Yeah, I'm, you know, just kind of. I found a little patch, and it's got some dead tree stumps around it, and it's got a fair amount of vegetation around. And this is this is kind of my my known good patch. Okay, I, I know I've gotten them here for a few years now, so I know that they're around. But you take a note of the type of tree, okay, if you find one. And the, the main thing for finding one is, you know, look along um, pathways and, and that type of stuff and look near old tree stumps around orchards. Um, they like ash and elm trees. And you really want to be looking up underneath vegetation and that kind of stuff because these boogers and you'll see one sitting right there just love to hide so when you do find one i don't know conventional wisdom is you want to either pinch it off or cut off the bottom but when you find one make sure it's hollow and I'll show you a video when I get home. I'll cut one open for you. But, um, you know, that's essentially what it looks like. Some morels are half freeze like these where they have a little bit of a hood and the cap will connect about halfway up on it, okay? There's another type of mushroom that looks like this called a verpa, but the stem connects all the way up at the tip of it. This stem will connect up to here. Actually, let me see if I can show it to you cut it open so that you can see here you, you can see that the stem is halfway up it's halfway up the uh, the cap so that's a true morel and if you find one you stop and you look around because there will always be more or usually almost always be more right in the same area like I've got one that's hiding right down there and I've got a couple more that are up over there. And, you know, if I keep looking around here, they'll be all through the place. And someone's shooting over here to my right, and I'm hoping that they're being smart about it. Okay, so anyways, that's basics of hunting. Another try. Awful heavy. Give it a try here. <gasps> Look at all of these. Did they fit in the calendar? Mm -hmm. Yes. Just, just barely. barely. <laughs> nice. Okay, so for this part of the video, what I'm looking to do, and I, I should preface this by saying right up front, I am not a mycologist, okay? I have been collecting morels since as far back as I can remember, but I am by no means a, a professional or... Uh, um, uh, an authoritative source on anything fungi, okay? However, I, I am fairly confident in my ability to identify um, morels and, you know, the edible species of Morchella versus uh, some of the lookalikes like Verpa and those kinds of things. So if there's ever any question, um, it goes back to the old, old adage, when in doubt, throw it out. But um, I figured I could at least demonstrate um, to you with these three mushrooms um, what you're likely to encounter and what good morels actually look like. Okay, so we're going to start with uh, the black over here on the side. One of the things that you will notice is at the very base where the cap connects to the stem, there is no hood. Okay, we don't have any kind of an overhang right here. Here, let me move that more towards the center. There's no overhang right here on the mushroom. And you'll also see that the stem itself is hollow. Now, if we split this in half and look inside, we'll see that it's hollow all the way up through. Okay? This is just the, the, the most delectable spring mushroom you can get your hands on okay we don't see any um, threads 
or cotton in the middle, which you wouldn't see with anything, you know, like this, but on the half freeze that this becomes more important to look for. But, you know, we have a very clean cavity on the inside, no hood that's overhanging, and, you know, that, that's a telltale sign for a black morel. Okay, now on a half free morel, which is what these two are, you still have this hollow cavity that runs up through. However, there is a, a poisonous mushroom called a verpa that will look from the outside very similar to this. Okay, it has a similar colored cap with wrinkling. It, it's hooded like this where if you see, you can see here where the stem doesn't connect at the base of the cap like it does on this one, but instead it connects halfway up the cap. And we have this cavity at the top of the cap, okay? That is a crucial piece to look for. And that's one of the identifying features of the half-free morel. That's why it's called a half-free, okay? So we have the cap that's only connected right here and is slightly hooded, but it still has that wonderful wrinkled appearance. It's just golden in color instead of, of black or, or dark gray, okay? The other thing that you will notice with a Verpa, if you were to get into one of those, this connection would be all the way at the top here. These would not, this cavity wouldn't exist. Instead, this would go straight up and it would connect at the top. And the other identifying feature of the Verpa that you look for is within the stem itself, there will be a cottony substance. There will be threads. It will still be somewhat hollow, or it can be still somewhat hollow, but it will have threads running all the way up through it. So really, I mean, it's hard to say if you'll always see all of the... Um, telltale signs of a verpa but since we're seeing no threads in here whatsoever and the cap is connected halfway up and we have this cavity up here we're very confident that that's a half free morel and for a smaller one where you know the the cap doesn't show quite as much wrinkling it it, it shows a bit more stripe up and down you will see that um, with the half freeze as well and we will cut this in half to verify and there again you see we are connected halfway up the cap we have this um, cavity up here it's you know it's slightly hooded you can see and we have no threading in the stem whatsoever so that's another good half free morale it's just it's got more straight patterning on the uh, on the cap versus you know it's it's larger brother here and again you know you have your traditional gray and there are uh, blonde morels that are more similar to the gray as well where they're not hooded and you know much more wrinkly in here and they tend to get a, quite a bit larger they can get quite quite large um, in the central new york area and i wouldn't be shocked if it was elsewhere but again i'm, I'm not certain of this um, we typically see the half free morels coming in um, and ready for harvest right as the um, right as the dandelions start to bloom on your lawn that's really the telltale sign that I look for if you're in the woods you'll see jack in the pulpit starting to to push out and take shape and you'll also see trillium actually blooming um, you know those are those are the times to be looking and then the blacks tend to, tend to come about a week later, at least in the hunting grounds that, where, where I'm finding these things. So that's kind of an illustration of, of two of the common types. I don't unfortunately have a blonde because they tend to show up later in the season. Um, I expect to be finding them in a week or two. Um, and, but they're going to be, again, very similar to this in the sense that they're not hooded and you know very hollow inside, just more blonde colored. Um, and they show up, uh, tend to be the last ones for the season. Okay, I hope this helps.